Well, folks, I hope everybody is doing okay. Hope you are survived the holidays. Excuse me while I drop stuff all over the workbench here. It is December 31st, 2022, the day I'm shooting this video, so it is New Year's Eve. I've got another old gun here for you. You guys know I like those. This is an oldie. This is an oldie. This is actually, I believe this is the oldest gun that I currently have possession of. This was made in 1921, but as you can tell from the title of the video, it is a 1903 model Colt automatic pocket hammerless is what it's commonly called. And you can see this one's had some, <laughs> it's lived quite a life. Let's go ahead and make sure we're clear on it for those who are uh, concerned. Yep, we are clear. But yeah, this one, uh, this one has lived quite a life. Made in 1921, which is the same year that my uh, grandmother was born. Y'all, this, these little guns have quite a history to be honest with you um uh, well i don't know why i would phrase it like that to be honest with you but i just my hillbilly terminology and speaking speaking impediment some might call it but um john browning i mean he really doesn't need any introduction if you don't know who john browning is there are a couple of good youtube videos out there that have a history on the gentleman but uh, John Browning, his name was John Moses Browning, and he lived from uh, 1865 to 1926, I believe it was, 1926, um, out in Utah. I think he was born out in the Utah area. John Browning was a gun designer, and uh, a lot of firearms we still use today were designed by him. Most notably, the one most people think of is the Colt 1911. Uh, that's the one that so many variants are still in use today um, that and people love them and with good reason i mean they're very good very good pistols this one the colt 1903 uh you know pocket hammerless he also made one called the 1903 pocket hammer uh the 1908 um pocket hammerless is the same gun except it's chambered in 380 he made the colt 1908 vest pocket well designed the 1908 vest pocket the 1911 he started the design of the browning high power and after he passed away the um uh, the guy what's his name dudrick sauve he's the one that finished design of it the Colt Woodsman pistol. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Ithaca Model 37 uh, pump shotgun was designed by John Browning. The um, the little Browning 22, the takedown 22, what do they call it? The SR-22, I think is the model number, was de designed by him. Uh, Winchester 1895, 1894 lever action rifles designed by John Browning. You go to the military side. Uh, the... Um, the the 50 caliber m2 what people call the ma deuce designed by john browning and if i remember to if i'm not going too fast i'm going to drop in a few pictures of these as i go along so you guys could kind of recognize it and know hey okay i didn't know that's what that gun was called the browning automatic rifle the bar rifle designed by john browning not only to design all these firearms you know of course he also did uh, a lot of cartridge design to go along with it he did, designed the 25 ACP. He designed the 32 ACP, the 380 ACP, 45 ACP, uh, 50 BMG. All those were cartridges that came into existence because of John Browning designing it, building a firearm around him. But not again. This is not a John Browning video. This is a video on this old Colt, and we're just going to take some slow pans of this. It looks like someone at one time on this one filed down the top of the site. Uh, I would say it was peened over, but obviously it's been filed. Probably was shooting a little bit off target, and that was their solution to uh, to, to bring it back on. But y'all, you know, I um, I love these old firearms. 
This, if you don't know, is an indicator. When you take this down, you actually have to push the slide back, lock it into place, and uh, that's what this notch is for, and then rotate the barrel, very similar to like the Baby Browning takedown. It's got the original, I don't know if these are um, Bakelite or if those are rubber grips, probably Bakelite, some sort of plastic grip. Safety, has a grip safety. And let me tell you guys, um, for a 32 ACP pistol, for a lot of years, the 32 ACP, ACP was a good cartridge to have. And I still carry a 32 on a pretty regular basis. I don't know if you've seen my C Camp video, uh, my, burrito, my video on the Beretta Cheetahs. I, th I think the 38, 32 ACP is a nice round. This, by today's standards, to me, this is still qualifies as a decent carry weapon. I mean, look at some of the characteristics of the design of it. See how round, rounded over it is? It's nice and slim, you know, slim profile. You can carry it condition one, you know, just like a 1911 with the grip safety, you know, carry it locked and loaded. Things that it doesn't have, well, it does have a heel release magazine, which a lot of people would be turned off by that. You know, I know I would. I think I'm wanting to say they are an eight round magazine. One, two, three, four. Yeah, probably, probably an eight round magazine. Uh, so what, eight plus one? Now this mag is the magazine that was with this pistol when I got it. It does not have any markings on it. I suspect this might be a more modern magazine, but I do have <laughs> what is really, this is an actual Colt uh, magazine, but you can tell, see this fine line right here? Normally the original magazines that were the two-tone, it was a little bit blurry, this line was. This is a remake. What happened is Colt brought this gun back here a few years ago. Well, I say a few years ago. Maybe it's been 10 or 15 years ago. I, I, I don't remember. And I tried to find it online when this gun was brought back because they did bring this back in manufacturing around the mid-2000s, and I don't think they're making it anymore. They don't have it on their website. But when they did that, they reached out to Inter Arms Texas, which is a company here in Houston, to uh, from the what the gentleman told me at inner arms was to have them build inspection gauges for their magazines uh inter arms i guess inter arms is well known in the high standard community for doing high standard high standard replacement magazines things like that and i guess they had the know-how or the expertise to do that but i went down to inner arms and picked up this mag for them it was about uh, i'm wanting to say it was about 50 or 60 bucks because i went with the two-tone but it is a actual genuine Colt magazine. Granted, it is about, uh, I guess I guess you would say it's probably about 100 years <laughs> younger than, uh, than the pistol, but uh, yeah. But these are good shooters. Uh, check out Hickok 45's video on this if you haven't. You know, he, he, he seems to really, he seems to really like, there are several videos out there of people that really do like these old Colts. And I'm wanting to say that Such has uh, a video on it too. Now this model, it's not this actual firearm, but it does have a special uh, a special place in my heart through a, a family history on it. My great grandmother, well, actually, I think it would be maybe my great great grandmother or my great. I think it's my great grandmother because my grandmother was born in 1921, and I believe it was her mama. My great grandmother used to have one of these by her bedside. This was in the Depression in the 30s. And she lived over, I'm wanting to say it was somewhere over in the Boot Hill of Missouri or maybe someplace in Tennessee at the time. But she kept one of these by her bedside and it would actually was called to use one night when there was a chicken thief. Someone was raiding her, her chicken house during the night. So she went out there hollering and fired a couple rounds at him and ran him off. So that's where the little family history for the Colt 32 comes into play with me. 
And ever since I heard that story, it's been, gosh, I was probably a teenager, maybe, or not younger, the first time Dad ever told me that story. I told myself one day I'm going to have a gun like Grandma had, or Great Grandma had. And I do. But some other interesting people really like the Colt 32s. Um, and it, it, technically, it's the Colt 1903 pocket hammerless is, is, is the definition of it. I'm sure you guys have probably heard of Al Capone. Um, Al Capone was a gangster in the Roaring Twenties. He was known to carry one of these on his person inside of his coat pocket. John Dillinger. I'm sure you've heard of John Dillinger. When he was shot and killed outside of that theater, he had one of these on his person. Now, I can't find, I, I find a few mentions of it, but the story is, is that when um, Bonnie and Clyde, when Bonnie broke Clyde Barrow out of jail, she smuggled one of these in, having it taped to her inner thigh. And then she was able to retrieve it and break him out of jail with one of these. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. There was another bank robber, um, Willie Sutton. Yeah, when Willie Sutton was caught uh, in Brooklyn, this was in the 50s, he had one of these on him. So they have quite a bit of history. Quite a bit of history in these old Colts. But we're right at the 10, 11 minute mark. And again, this is just one of my videos where I just wanted to show you some of this beautiful old firearm. And I love these things. You know how I love, especially the ones that are, you know, not <laughs> museum quality. Just to, uh, I'd love to just to know the history on them. And, you know, Colt, I mean, and I've considered spending the money. I think I can send Colt, I think it's a hundred bucks. And they will give me a Colt letter uh, that will uh, date this. And they will also tell me where it was originally shipped to. I think that would be interesting to know, to see where this was shipped to, where it was sold from. You know, if it was a hardware store or whatever, you know, maybe it was sent to Chicago in the in the Roaring Twenties. Maybe it was sent to some little store down here in Texas. I mean, who knows? But uh, I think it'd be an interesting history. And I may, I may end up doing that at some point. If I do, I'll put a follow-up video so y'all can know more history on this one. But in the meantime... If you have any questions on this, let me know. Drop them down in the comments. And uh, yeah, take the time to click that little thumbs up on the video. You know, share it with some friends if you like it. You know, it helps my channel. Y'all be safe out there. Happy New Year.